He is the man behind some of your favorite movies and TV shows. Can you live in that moment as best you can with clear eyes and love in your heart? I, I don't know anything. My name is John Nash. I'm being held against my will. Uh, this is Houston. Uh, say again, please. Houston, we have a problem. Two sticks and extra chocolate. Is it Mardi Gras? What are you charging for that? He doesn't like to discuss money. I don't like money. to discuss money. What does that mean? You don't pay for it? You forgot about me the second you divorced me in there. You still owe me what's mine. Man, the films and TV shows he has uh, done have uh, been honored, earned him 43 Oscar and 149 Emmy nom nominations, and now he's opening up secrets about his success that you can apply to your own life. Brian Grazer says curiosity is the key, and that's behind his brand new book. It's called A Curious Mind, The Secret to a Bigger Life. Brian, good morning to you. Thanks for having me on. Your book is great. I, I love it. And you, you start by telling the story about when you're in your 20s, you're out in California, somehow you get a job as a law clerk, and, yeah. and you realize, wait a minute, I can, I can kind of make this job work so I can meet the biggest people in show business. But yeah, that's basically what it is. I, got, I graduated college, right. didn't quite know what to do, um, was in my apartment complex. I overheard a conversation, <laughs> two guys saying the easiest job in the world, this cushy job, was to be a law clerk at Warner Brothers. So I got the phone number, called 843-6000, got the job. And uh, my job was to just deliver papers to right. famous people, but not to actually touch them or hand it to just them. Just give it to the housekeeper. Just give it to the housekeeper. But, you but I insisted that I had to hand the papers <laughs> directly to Warren Beatty or William Peter Blatty or Mel Brooks. And, and I would generate a conversation with them right. once they agreed. And then you realized that everybody pretty much talked to you. You know, you'd yeah. say, I've, I've got to see uh, Matt Damon. I've got to go and talk yeah. to Jim Carrey that we see right there, or Ron Howard, who eventually became your uh, partner, or Steve Martin, and the list goes on and on and on. So about 35 years ago, you started having these, uh, these curiosity conversations, and you just call people up. Exactly. So basically what I did is once I established myself after Splash, the movie right. Splash, as a, as a real movie producer, not just a guy that delivered papers and said hello to people, um, I used that same methodology but applied it to anyone that was not in the movie business. So science, medicine, politics, religion, fashion, um, fine art, uh, all kinds of art forms. And every two weeks I'd go meet somebody that was was expert in one of those things. So I got to learn about a subject and I could enter the psyche of another person at the same time. And by doing that, I was just really enlarging my life. I was creating opportunity for myself that I was unimaginable to me. I, I didn't go to the meet these people looking for a job or anything. It just completely enriched me intellectually and emotionally, and it completely expanded my life. Okay, so it started with you'd go and meet these Hollywood big shots, and you'd give them the papers, and then you'd have a conversation. Then you yeah. realize that so much of our lives are dependent on figuring out how things work. And you just asked a lot of questions. Exactly. That, that's exactly right. Because in the movie business or television business, it, it, you're trying to demystify what's going on. It's kind right. of a fog. You're, like in a little, you're in a little Cessna trying to fly through clouds. And you're trying to get to the other side. And once I found my way to demystify what was how to create leverage right. in the movie business, and I cr created Splash, I moved on to meet sure. other people. So for 35 years, you would call people up, and inexplicably, they would say yes. Do you think they thought you were going to make a movie about them? No, I don't think they thought that. And it wasn't really my intention. I mean, I've met from Princess Di. I just, and I, you know what? Let's do a lightning round. I'm okay. going to give you a name. You t give me like a, just oh. a tidbit about that person. Okay. Princess uh, uh, Lady Di. Lady Di, enormous, uh, a lot of humanity, enormous amount of humanity, and we shared a bowl of ice cream together. Um, and it was <laughs> the way, same spoon. Way, way out How of very Joe Biden way, of you. <laughs> way, way out of uh, out of royal etiquette. No, we had two spoons. I took a scoop. She took a scoop. All right. Then I asked her to take another scoop. Okay. Uh, Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. I met with Michael Jackson. And I really wanted to try to understand how he created music. So I add. I asked him if he would take his gloves off, and Ooh. he did, and that felt like a threshold issue, and he became Mozart. He uh -huh. was gigantically articulate. Did I hear somewhere that one of the most intimidating people you have ever met, uh -oh. and you've met pretty much everybody, yeah. was George W. Bush? I said that, but I, on your show, I'm going to revise that. All right. Because George W. Bush was very friendly, although he stood... The, differently. He didn't stand towards me. He put his shoulder up against my shoulder and I had to look at him and speak to him like that. And it was for an hour. 
close. <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah, that's a close conversation. He, yeah, but he was a, he was a very <laughs> kind man, very kind and warm guy. Uh, Elon Musk, uh, who I plan on doing a tele yeah. uh, series about Mars uh, uh, with him, SpaceX guy and the SpaceX guy, the electric he, car guy. He's slightly intimidating because he's so brilliant. I mean, his brilliance is overpowering. Before you go. Yeah. And this is at the end of your book, you say how to have a curiosity conversation, because if you do, it will enhance your life. The thumbnail sketch of how to do it is how is you find a subject that you're interested in. Right. Then you try to locate the expert in that subject. Then you do research. Then you create a strategy to meet that person, which could take a year or longer. And then you meet them and you've learned something about architecture. You've learned something about fashion or fine art. And once you do that, it really does expand your life. And more importantly, it expands the opportunities that you will have in your life. In the case, in my case, right. I made many movies that were sort of related to the people that I met. Because you met Jim Lovell. Next thing you know, Apollo 13. Exactly. Or John Nash. It just became a it became a yeah. beautiful mind. Uh, the book is called A Curious Mind. What a what a coincidence! I wonder where that came from. Brian, congratulations. <laughs> Thanks the a lot. The book is terrific. Thank you so much. I'm glad you liked it. All right.